Hey, this is Warren Redlick. I'm here with John McElroy. Okay, John's not really here, but this is a video of John saying why he thinks Tesla will not be able to deliver 20 million vehicles in 2030. I want to break down what he says and show you why I think he's wrong. Are you ready? Let's go. Now, John McElroy has been big for a long time in the auto industry, auto industry journalist. I don't want to say he doesn't know what he's talking about. The guy's pretty sharp. He gets some things right. He gets some things wrong. I think he's got this one wrong, but let's listen in a little bit to what he says and we'll go through it. Hi, John McElroy here talking all things automotive. You know, Elon Musk has a habit of overpromising and underdelivering. I wouldn't call it a habit. Overpromising and underdelivering. Wait a minute. SpaceX has certainly overdelivered. Model Y was delivered early and Model Y is killing it. So in a lot of ways, Tesla's doing great. And 2020, Elon said they would deliver 500,000 vehicles and they did like damn near close to 500,000 vehicles delivered with all the hurdles that were thrown in their way. So that supposed habit of over-promising and under-delivering, that's a bias and it's an unfair bias, John. I, I love John, just to be clear. I love John, I think he's great. Uh, he does, that doesn't mean he's, he's right on everything, but that, that demonstrates an unfair bias, John. The good news is that ultimately, he almost always does deliver, but not always. For example, he's been promising full autonomous driving for years. I am so tired of people whining that autonomous driving isn't here yet. Elon's working on it. He's admitted the problem was harder than he thought. He thinks they're a lot closer. People driving FSD beta 10.69.2 today are raving about it. I've driven 10.69.1.1. And, you know, I think FSD beta is amazing, but it's just a bigger problem than he thought it was. A lot of other people thought it was not that big of a problem. And, you know, making hay over one thing when ignoring all the other things he's done is, is annoying. Tell me somebody else who's landed an orbital rocket booster and we can talk. I think the same thing's going to happen with Elon's boast that Tesla will sell 20 million cars a year by 2030. 20 million cars a year by 2030 is not just Elon. Chair of the board, Robin Denholm, restated that goal herself at the Tesla annual shareholder meeting. This is not just Elon saying it. Drew Baglino's behind it. Robin Denholm's behind it. When Elon says it and it's just Elon, maybe you've got a point. But when the Tesla team is behind it, you're missing it. That's a, that's a critical distinction in understanding Elon and his companies. When Elon says something, okay. When Gwyn Shotwell at SpaceX says, yeah, we're doing that, now it has a lot more credibility because it's not just Elon talking. The team is on board. That's one of the things to watch. Is Zach Kirkhorn on board? Is Drew Baglino on board? Is Ashok on board? Is the Tesla team on board? You can look at the same thing with Boring Company and Neuralink. Are the teams on board? We're going to see that over time. Are the teams on board with the plans? If it's just Elon talking, you can discount it a little bit. But when the team is on board, it's a different story. So saying, oh, it's just Elon. This isn't just Elon. I think that's a physical impossibility by then. That was a dangerous statement, John. A physical impossibility. Elon hates that. It's not a physical impossibility. It might be very difficult, but physics does not prohibit this from happening. So that's, that's a really touchy word in, in the world of Elon. Don't say it's a physical impossibility unless you can prove that it's physically impossible. Throwing your opinions around is not proof. So it's your opinion that it's not possible or that's not going to happen. That doesn't mean it's physically impossible. That's you over-talking yourself, John. And in fact, I don't think it's ever going to happen. And here's why. Last year, Tesla made nearly one million cars with only two assembly plants. That's not just impressive. It's beyond amazing. This year, Tesla opened up its plants in Berlin and Austin, and they're going to easily double the company's production capacity when they get up to full line speed. Give him credit here. He is acknowledging Tesla's successes, but it's going to more than double, more than double because Fremont is limited in capacity and Berlin and Texas are going to be more productive than Fremont. One of the things that, that, that everyone seems to be ignoring is Shanghai is probably going to be duplicating itself sometime in the next year. So Tesla is going to be more than doubling its capacity. And Giga Texas is way more than double Fremont. Giga Texas is absolutely huge. On top of that, Tesla says Giga Shanghai and Giga Austin are both going to be able to crank out 2 million vehicles a year apiece. So once it gets to that level, Tesla will have the capacity to make 5 million cars a year. Uh, I get to six. 
I, I get two million each from Shanghai and Texas, one million plus from Berlin, and close to a million from Fremont. So that's closer to six million, not five million. I don't want to quibble. And I think Shang I think Texas is ultimately going to be more than two million vehicles. And Shanghai is going to be more than two million vehicles because Shanghai, the one factory already appears to have a capacity of more than a million, and they're building a second factory. So those two factories together might even be 2.5 million. And then Giga Texas is probably going to be more like 2.5 million. So that's 7.5 million. And then you add in Berlin and Fremont, and you're, you're approaching 10 million on four, four factory locations, right? Not four factories, because Shanghai is two factories. But you could be approaching 10 million on four factory locations. Elon's sandbagging how much a Giga factory can deliver. That would make it bigger than Mercedes, BMW, Honda, Nissan, Renault, and even Ford. And I do believe that is possible. Those automakers should be quaking in their boots. I like how he believes it's possible that the four factories that already exist could actually achieve their production capacity. Yeah, of course it's possible. It, it's, you know, it's demonstrated they're producing cars. They just need to scale up. And Shanghai is the example. If Shanghai is producing on a pace for a million vehicles a year already, then obviously Giga Texas and Giga Berlin are going to scale appropriate to that. We know that Fremont has expanded its production. That may have been before John's comments that, that the, the recent news that Fremont has expanded its production to 12 million a week and 12,000 a week and may hit 14,000 a week soon. But this is very common that people underestimate what Tesla is capable of. As much as I love John, I think he, and, and as positive as he can be about Tesla, I think he's still underestimating what Tesla can achieve and what Tesla will achieve. But to go from 5 million a year to 20 million, by 2030 is more than just a stretch goal. It's a near physical impossibility. So he went to fit from physically impossible to a near physical impossibility. He's, gonna, he's got his explanation. I don't buy his explanation. He's got his explanation. We'll hear it and I'll debunk it. But he's already shorting Tesla down to 5 million on factories that together should be producing maybe 8 million. Between Giga Texas, Giga Shanghai, Giga Berlin, and Fremont. Tesla's probably at 8 million to 10 million vehicles just on those four locations, capacity in the future. Even though Tesla seems to be able to build new assembly plants faster than other automakers, it still takes it three years to go from site selection to line speed. This is a good point. I, I'll give John this. This is a good point, and this is where his argument's going to come in. That, you know, typically it takes Tesla that long. Now, Giga Shanghai went from a dirt field to producing cars, delivering cars in 11 months. But you still got to pick the site. You got to clear the site. There's a lot going on there. So I don't think he's wrong. Three years might be a little off, but you know, then you got to ramp. You got to ramp to full productive capacity. I think actually three years is short because Giga Shanghai is still ramping and still growing its productivity. So three years is a good ballpark estimate for how long it's going to take, if, if not even a little longer, really. So he's actually being charitable here. And line speed is the key word here. Yeah, you can put up the steel infrastructure in the walls and the roof in record time, and you can get the machinery into the plant quickly, and then have a drive-off ceremony where you declare the plant officially open. But to get up to line speed takes everyone, even Tesla, about a year. Elon says 12 to 18 months to fully ramp a factory. So not just about a year, but longer than a year. Although I think this also ignores that once you have your system down in factory A, when you open factory B, if you simply import the system that factory A had, it might not be as hard to ramp. One of the reasons that Tesla doesn't ramp faster is because they don't just import what factory A was doing. They're constantly improving what all their factories are doing. So the new factory doesn't just copy the blueprint of what the previous factories have done. They do something different. And that's going to be true with the next round of factories as well. It needs to add 15 million units of manufacturing capacity in the next seven and a half years if it wants to get to 20 million units by the end of the decade. Now, again, I just want to point out he's, he's counting wrong. Because he's limiting the existing four factories to 5 million vehicles a year, he says they need another 15 million vehicles a year from somewhere else. He's counting that if Giga Texas does 2 million and, Giga, and Shanghai does 2 million and Berlin does a million and Fremont does a million, you're at 6 million. And then the Giga Texas and Shanghai might be closer to 2.5 million and Berlin might do more than a million. And you may be heading towards 10 million vehicles a year from those four factories. So rather than needing to quadruple your factories, 
you might only need to double your factories or close to that. And, and any factory they build is going to be more productive than Fremont. Fremont is the least productive of Tesla's factories. And all the factories they build are probably going to be as productive or more productive than Shanghai and Texas and Berlin because the next generation of factory will be better than the current generation of factory. That's the way Tesla works. And this is something that he misses. And since it takes three years to go from site selection to line speed, that means the last of its new assembly plants would have to be site selected by 2027. Now, this part I agree with, that if it's going to take three years to fully ramp your factories from site selection to, to fully ramped, I think he might even be, it might even be longer than three years. And you need to have your site selection done by 2027. So when Elon talked, I think Elon hinted or there was some question about it. There's some idea that Tesla's going to add one gigafactory a year for the next you know, several years. I think they need to do more than that. I think they need to go faster unless the next generation of factories is more productive, significantly more productive. So I think the robo-taxi factories are going to be substantially more productive than the current generation of factories because the robo-taxi is going to be designed to be manufactured in high volume. And Elon has talked about this before, make the factory more efficient in terms of how you use the volumetric space and make the factories more efficient in how fast the vehicles move through the line and get from start of the factory to end of the factory. It would be foolish to think that Tesla isn't going to approve on what it's doing based on the fact that it's constantly improving on what it's doing. And the next vehicle will be designed for manufacturing even more than the current generation of vehicles. That's another thing that John just doesn't, I don't think he sees it. That's only five years away. So let's assume Tesla can boost production in Shanghai and Austin to 2 million a year apiece. That means it could make 5 million vehicles using only four assembly plants. Again, just to correct his math, if it's 2 million each from Texas and Shanghai, 1 million from Berlin and 1 million from Fremont, it's 6 million, not 5 million. Okay, just, just be clear. That, that's where it's heading. Fremont might be a little less than a million. Berlin might be a little more than a million. I think Shanghai is going to be clearly more than 2 million. If you just look at the numbers of what's happening right now, and Texas is probably going to be more than 2 million as well. The place is huge. So if it wants to make 20 million vehicles, that means it needs 12 more assembly plants. So you get his math. If you've got four and you want to do the same thing from your next 12 as you're going to do from the four, if you want to get from 5 million to 20 million, then you need four times as many plants. You need to build three more, three more sets of four factories. But given that Fremont is relatively unproductive, given that Shanghai is highly productive and Texas is highly productive, Tesla is going to follow the Shanghai and Texas model, if not do better, more likely it's going to do better. If you take his premise that you've got five, you know, four locations, you're going to need 12 more locations. If you say, wait a minute, let's go back a second and say the existing four locations are going to be able to do, let's say, 8 million vehicles, and Fremont is sort of an outlier, and each factory is going to be able to produce more than 2 million, right? Because he's limiting, he's saying 5 million out of 4 when the latest factories are 2 million each, right? So if you want to go from 8 million to 20 million, now you need 12 million, you only need 6 factories, not 12. This is where John's math is off, right? If you need 15 million factories and the average factory produces 1.1 or 1.2 million vehicles a year, then you need 12. But if you acknowledge that the existing four factories are probably the four factory locations are probably going to hit 8 million, now you need 12 million. And if each new factory is going to produce 2 million vehicles, then out of the 12 million vehicles you need, you're going to need six factories, not 12. So this is where John's got it wrong. And I think what we're going to see, and Elon hasn't acknowledged this yet, is that the robo taxi factories are either going to be much more productive as in individually each robo taxi factory will produce a lot more than 2 million vehicles a year like maybe 4 million vehicles a year or they're going to scale down robo taxi factories and they're going to produce a high volume at a smaller amount of investment in a smaller footprint or maybe both there may be large robo taxi factories for large markets like china and the us there might be smaller robo taxis for smaller markets that would make more sense Perhaps India, Japan, Australia, maybe certain other locations. I think Europe would probably also see a full-blown robo-taxi factory. But you can see where if those factories are producing 4 million a year each, right? You only need three robo-taxi factories. You only need three robo-taxi factories if each robo-taxi factory produces 4 million a year each. Then you get your 12 million a year on top of the 8 million a year from the four factories we have, the four factory locations we have. And it's only got five years to do that, meaning it should have already started. 
Well, but site selection may have already started. They've already said they're about to announce a factory. And my gut is, when they announced Texas, they announced Texas and Berlin around the same time. So it may be that we're about to hear two new factory announcements. I think there's a shot for three new factory announcements. But what's coming is they said they're going to be producing the RoboTaxi in 2024. So my expectation is at some point they're going to announce where they're going to build RoboTaxi factories. And there's going to be at least one in China, at least one in the U.S., and at least one in Europe. And those are going to be high volume factories. That's where it's going to happen. And that's probably going to be announced for 2024 because Tesla has the capital to invest that. And because they're becoming more capital efficient when they build factories. So I would not be surprised to hear that Tesla's decided to go ahead and build multiple robo taxi factories at the same time. It may be that say, you know, what, we're going to build one first and we're going to build it in the U.S. because we know we're doing the U.S. Or maybe they're going to do it in China because they're really efficient in China. But I think it's more likely since they did Berlin and Texas at the same time, they're going to do robo taxi factories two or three at one time. They did two at once with Berlin and Texas. Maybe they do three at once with robo taxi. I think that's reasonable, but we'll see. Give the company the benefit of the doubt. Let's say all of its plants going forward will be like Austin and Shanghai and capable of making two million cars apiece. Well, then it needs the equivalent of seven and a half giant assembly plants. So he's trying to give the benefit of the doubt and saying seven and a half, but he's ignored the fact that he's ignored the fact that two plus two plus one plus one is really six. So you need. On, on the 6 million, you'd need 14, so you'd only need seven new factories. But he's ignoring the fact that Giga Texas and Giga Shanghai are likely to be 2.5 million a year. I mean, you know, Giga Shanghai, the one factory that already exists, is already looking like it's over a million a year. And they're going to be building a second factory, which will be as efficient, if not more, than the first one. And Giga Texas is likely to be more than 2 million a year. Seven and a half plants in five years' time. Again, it would have to start building them almost immediately to hit its goal by 2030. He's also assuming that Tesla can only build one factory at a time when they built Giga Texas and Giga Berlin at the same time. And really, they were still building Giga Shanghai to some extent or building out Giga Shanghai when they started Giga Texas and Giga Berlin. I don't believe it can do that. But for argument's sake, let's just say it can. And then the question becomes, can it sell that many? Oh no, here he goes. Is there demand? This is where it gets fun. Gotta tell you, I just got out of test driving the Kia EV6, and it's a real compelling electric car. Tesla has not faced much competition so far. This is the classic misguided statement. I don't want to call it a lie from John because I like John. This is a classic misguided statement. Tesla has always faced competition. Okay? Electric vehicles are like 2% of the global market, right? Or Tesla is like 2% of the global market. And before other EV makers started making EVs, Tesla was competing against gas cars. Tesla has always been competing against gas cars, right? They've always had competition. The competition has always been there. Is the competition getting better? Maybe. But the Kia EV6 or whatever EV you're talking about isn't taking market share from Tesla. They're taking market share from the 98% of the cars that are gas cars. If, a Tesla is, if Teslas are better than gas cars, and they are, then your EV only needs to be better than gas cars. Take market share from gas cars. You don't have to be better. You notice he didn't say the EV6 was better than a Tesla because it's not. Right? There's so many ways that a Tesla is better than an EV6. I'm not saying the EV6 is a bad car. I'm just saying it's probably better than gas cars and that's all it needs to be. And then it takes market share from gas cars, not from Tesla. And everyone else in the marketplace needs to scale up dramatically. So he's talking about this, this other EV here, the EV6. What plans do other EV manufacturers have to scale manufacturing? If the total global market is, let's say, 80 million vehicles a year, it varies between 75 and 90 million over the last few years. If the total global market is, let's say, 80 million vehicles a year, and Tesla is able to get to 20 million vehicles a year production, and every Tesla is better than gas cars, which is true, then the other EV makers would need to make more than 60 million EVs combined to replace all the gas cars and then be battling Tesla for market share. And the other EV makers are nowhere near on pace to get to 60 million EVs a year by 2030. None of them even talk like they're going to get close to that. So the, the, the competition is not other EVs. EVs together compete. Teslas and Kias and all the other EVs are competing together to displace these smelly, stinky, 
polluting gasoline cars from the roads and replace those cars with more efficient, better accelerating electric vehicles. This is a common mindset that somehow Tesla's competing against other EVs. Tesla's competing against gas cars. The other EVs are competing against gas cars. When EVs become more than half the market, maybe EVs will compete with each other. But for now, EVs are competing with gas cars, and this competition thing is nonsense. And I'm not saying that the EV6 is a Tesla killer because it's not, but it is a compelling EV that's going to capture a lot of buyers. Good. It's going to capture a lot of buyers and take them away from gas cars. It's not going to take away share from Tesla. If they're, if they're better than gas cars, they'll take share from gas cars. If to take share from Tesla, they have to be better than Tesla, and they're not. And as other automakers come out with compelling electrics in market segments and price points where Tesla does not compete. Well, if they're in market assessment segments where Tesla doesn't compete, then they're not competing with Tesla. But Tesla's going to cover pretty much every market segment, so that's kind of a, a useless statement. They're going to grab a lot of buyers, too. And while I would never underestimate what Tesla can do, this idea that it's going to be selling 20 million electric cars a year by the end of the decade, it's just not credible. In fact, I don't think it's ever going to happen. You notice how he stretched it from it's not going to happen by 2030 to it's never going to happen. Is he saying that they're never going to be able to produce 20 million cars? Is he saying they're not going to be able to sell 20 million cars? This is, this is the fundamental question. This is, this is the fundamental thing. You either believe in Tesla or you don't. If you believe that Teslas are better than gas cars, and I obviously do, that every Tesla is better than every gas car out there. Simple, you know, like every Model 3 is better than every Camry. It's better than every Lexus, whatever. Uh, every Model X is better than any gas SUV. Every Model S is better than any gas sedan. Are there some tiny places where gas cars have some advantage? Yes. Diesel pickup trucks have an advantage over Teslas in towing, at least for now. We'll see where we are in a few years with Cybertruck. But there is some advantage that they have in terms of towing range. But the electric vehicles are much more efficient. They're much less expensive to tow things. So I think even that one the EVs are going to win out. So it's really hard to find market segments where a Tesla isn't going to be better than gas cars. And if you're making an EV, is it better than other gas cars? Great. But does John think that the other EV makers are going to scale up to 60 million vehicles by 2030 or ever? Because he doesn't think Tesla is going to scale up to 20 million. So which EV maker is going to scale up or which EV makers are going to scale up to the point where they're delivering 60 million cars a year? I don't see any other EV maker with any plans close to getting the rest of the EV market to 60 million EVs a year. It would be nice if we saw that. I mean, BYD is scaling to some extent. NEO is scaling to some extent. Volkswagen, GM is making claims. Ford is trying. But they all have a long road ahead of them to get to the volumes they need for the rest of the world to get to 60 million EVs a year. And the other side of this is when Tesla delivers RoboTaxi, and I say when, not if, when Tesla delivers a robo-taxi and each robo-taxi replaces five cars, you start to end up in a situation where Tesla is going to be the only one making cars. And maybe there'll be a few others making a few market segments for rich people. But that, that could be where we're heading in five years or so, if not less. Once the robo I, think, I think the robo-taxi network starts in a year or two. You know, it's hard, it's hard to predict that. And other people are saying, no, there's, a, there's other hurdles. But five years? You really think it's five years away not by now? And five years is 2027. 2030 is more than five years away. So once we hit that threshold where we actually have a robo-taxi network and every Tesla produced is the value of five cars, I don't know that there's room for other automakers to survive. I'm not sure they survive anyway because they're all going to go bankrupt. As Tesla scales production, a lot of these car companies are going to go bankrupt. Your governments are going to bail them out. Our governments are going to bail them out. They're going to go bankrupt again because they still won't be able to produce cars at, at a competitive rate. And anybody who thinks, oh, the other EV makers are right behind Tesla, yeah, well, show me the rocket company that's more than that's less than seven years behind SpaceX. Because SpaceX started landing orbital rocket boosters December 2015. And I don't see anybody close to landing orbital rocket boosters seven years later. So if somebody's close behind Tesla, I'm going to say no, they're at least seven years behind Tesla. At least five. But I think they're seven years behind Tesla as well especially when it comes to self-driving cars. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. Check out the t-shirts. The Tesla Air t-shirt is the most popular t-shirt on the website, elonbits.com. Please support this channel on the Locals platform on Patreon or as a YouTube channel member. 
check out my other videos. Please subscribe, share, like, tell everybody about this. And thank you so much for watching.